Asia Times. NATO sends combat troops to Ukraine. The North Atlantic Alliance is sending its combat units to Ukraine. This was reported by Asia Times. The publication notes that in this way, NATO is trying to prevent Russia's victory. According to the author of the material, a full-fledged military conflict between the West and the Russian Federation may begin after Biden's victory in the US presidential election. The alliance's plan to prevent a Ukrainian armed forces disaster is to fill the gaps in the ranks of the Ukrainian forces by importing its advisors. Biden is waiting until re-election to formally order the deployment of US troops. Then the Third World War will begin, says Asia Times. The author of the material emphasizes that soldiers from Poland, France, Great Britain, Finland and other NATO member countries are already arriving in Ukraine in large numbers. So far, these formations are concentrated mainly in Western Ukraine. However, the activities of some Western units have already been noticed in the immediate vicinity of the contact line. NATO says that these are not combat soldiers, but specialists in maintaining sophisticated Western equipment. But if they are shooting at Russians, then the only way to interpret their presence is as an active role in the hostilities. Notes the author of the material recalling that the United States previously sent advisors to Vietnam using the same scheme. Asia Times also notes that the United States has already fully realized the inevitable collapse of the Ukrainian army and therefore the only way out of the current situation is considered the full-fledged deployment of American and NATO troops to Ukraine. In national security circles, there is fear of a Russian victory in Ukraine. It would be a serious setback for America's security strategy and a blow to NATO, perhaps even a fatal one, the publication says. At the same time, the publication emphasizes that the North Atlantic Alliance is simply not ready for a full-scale conflict with Russia. Confiscated Russian assets will allow Ukraine to finance war until 2028. Ukraine has received a vital military assistance of $61 billion from the United States. However, Kyiv still needs a medium-term financing plan to withstand pressure from Russia, according to Reuters. The central element of the financing plan should be the mobilization of frozen assets of the Moscow Central Bank to compensate for the war damages. Reuters suggests that the American aid package will provide Ukraine with weapons and ammunition until approximately the end of 2025. Therefore, during this period, Ukraine may once again run out of arms. Even if Joe Biden is re-elected as US president this November, he may struggle to get more money out of Congress. And if Donald Trump returns to the White House, American support for Ukraine will be even more precarious given the Republican candidate's previous lack of commitment to Kyiv's defense, the article states. A multi-year financing plan for Ukraine would have several advantages. First and foremost, it would provide some insurance against political fluctuations in the United States. It would also bolster the morale of Ukrainians and give Western arms manufacturers more confidence in expanding production. The main way to get much more money for Ukraine is to mobilize Russian assets frozen by Western countries at the beginning of the war, amounting to approximately $320 billion. If the countries guaranteed interest from the assets for a decade, they might raise 30 to 40 billion euros. While this will help, it will not be a game changer because it will fund Ukraine for less than half a year, the report says. It is emphasized that if Ukraine receives $320 billion, it will be a completely different matter. That would finance the war until at least the end of 2028. If the belligerents ended or froze the conflict before then, Ukraine could use some of the money to rebuild its economy, which the World Bank estimates will cost $486 billion, the material says. Since the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine, Western countries have frozen over $300 billion of Russian assets. So far, they have not been able to confiscate them due to legal and reputational risks. In this regard, the United States and G7 countries are considering several options. Transferring the proceeds from Russian assets to Ukraine to buy weapons, transferring Russian assets to Ukraine as compensation for Russia's invasion, using frozen Russian assets as collateral for loans to Ukraine. Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, stated that $300 billion in frozen Russian assets could be used as collateral for lending to Ukraine. 
Earlier, Reuters reported that the group of seven countries are considering discussing the idea proposed by the United States to confiscate proceeds from Russian assets at the summit scheduled for June.